Welcome everyone to uh, Red Flowers and a Vase. Uh, it's going to be a really fun class and I'm glad that you all are joining us. And if we can go ahead and switch to our overhead view, that would be great. You don't need to see me, you just need to see what we're going to be uh, painting tonight. So I'd bring the painting up for a little show and tell to kind of get you uh, acquainted with what we're going to be doing tonight. So. One thing I hope you can see is that there's a really faint bit of blue here in the background. And then if you look kind of behind the flowers, there's also a little bit of a shadowing of uh, burgundy that's going on there. And the blue continues down the side of our vase until we get to kind of our little table area there. So lots of little transparent things going on. Uh, in the background, and then lots of colorful things happening in our vase. So I had you get a clear primed linen canvas to work on tonight so that 90% of the work is done for you. This uh, background is beautiful to look at and really enhances your uh, painting. So I want to get started by putting out a little bit of folk art floating medium on my palette. And this is a clear... Uh, kind of uh, gel consistency medium that's going to make our paint move around really easily. And it's also going to make our paint more transparent. So let's put out a little French blue. And let's go ahead and put out just a little tiny bit of pure black as well. So the techniques used in tonight's paintings are not difficult at all. You just have to kind of tackle each little um, individual uh, step and then be ready to move on. So I'm using oh, about a three quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to pick up some of the floating medium. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of French blue and kind of mix that here on my palette because I want my paint to be pretty translucent. I don't want um, to have a, a solid uh, color here. All right, so I'm going to start. Uh, we Hopefully you all have your pattern uh, or your design transferred on your uh, canvas. So I'm going to start kind of above the leaf that's right here. And I just want to look and see if my paint is transparent, if I can see through my color, which I can, which is exactly what I want. So I'm starting on the corner of my brush and I'm going to simply scribble some of this transparent blue onto the canvas and kind of stretch it over to the right side. All right, so let me hold this up so you can kind of see where it's shiny there. There is uh, a little bit of this translucent blue. I'm going to put a little bit more on so you can see. But you really do want this to be pretty translucent. Let some of that beautiful linen show through. All right, so hopefully you could see that. I'm going to give you a minute to just kind of get in here with me and get started. But there you can see there's a little bit stronger blue and it really does simply just fade away into nothing. All right, so I'm gonna give you a minute to catch up with me and then we're gonna move on. So far, we haven't done anything very hard. I want to ease you back into painting after that holiday weekend. Hopefully, you all had a, a nice, relaxing holiday weekend. Got to enjoy yourself a little bit.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my brush that still has some of the uh, floating medium in it, and I'm, but I'm going to pick up a little bit more paint. So this is going to be a bit more opaque, and I'm going to come down here right around that leaf. And I'm going to connect these two areas. And now I'm scrubbing this paint on. I have very little paint on my brush. And I'm going to just use the edge of my brush to come right next to that base, creating a nice sharp line. And then we're going to scrub this little veil of blue right next to the base. And then we're going to let it carry out. And if yours goes all the way to the edge of the canvas, that's perfectly fine. A couple of questions, Andy. Okay. Um, is there a list or PDF of all the folk art colors that Angela um, can print off? There is on platonline.com, there is a folk art catalog that she can download, which has all of the folk art acrylics in it. Okay. And then um, this is regarding the painting that you're doing right now. What color okay. is the background? The background color here? This yeah. is the actual clear primed linen canvas. This is how it comes directly from the manufacturer. I haven't done anything at all to the background. Okay. All right. So I'm going to set my brush down for just a second, and I'm going to pick up um, a little violet pansy, and we're going to put a little dab of that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm still in this little puddle of paint I have here, which was a little uh, floating medium and my, get my color name right, my French blue. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of pure black to this because I want my color to be a little less blue and a little more gray. And then I'm going to imagine that from the corner of my vase, straight across the canvas, there's like an imaginary line. We're going to put a real line there, but that's our line. And above this line, we're going to add this new kind of bluish gray color. And we're adding a little bit more paint to our canvas. And I'll bring this up for a close up in just a second. But I'm just lightly blending this grayish color up into my blue. So when you are done, it should look something like this. So it goes from French blue to kind of a, a grayish color there. Okay, and I'm going to give you a moment to play with that. And of course, I'm going to play with mine too. I just want to add a little bit more of that French blue. It's my gray color seemed to have gotten a little bit more gray than I wanted it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that alone. And I'll give you a minute to catch up with me. So on our background to be very, very uh, soft and subtle. We don't want it really harsh or heavily painted. If you can see through some of your paint to the background, that's really, really good. I'll bring this up to the camera so that you get a little better idea of what this looks like. Okay, time to move on. I'm going to take a little French blue and that little tiny bit of pure black, and I'm going to add a bit of floating medium. So it's basically the same thing that I had right over here. And I'm going to 
I'm right in the middle of the vase. I'm gonna set my brush right underneath the vase and I'm going to pull down. So you see we've got one little mark that's pulling straight down from the middle of the vase. And then I'm going to do that again, make another mark right next to it. And then I'm right over here at the corner of the vase and I'm going to make another slightly longer vertical mark there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of pure black and just create a little bit of a darker area right to the right side of the vase. So that's what that looks like right now. And while this is still wet, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that violet pansy and mix that in to this little puddle here so that now I've got kind of a purpley color. And what I'm going to do is right at the corner of the vase, from the corner of the vase to the right-hand edge of the canvas, I'm gonna make a horizontal line. And then I'm going to, not right at the edge of the canvas, but in just a tiny bit, make a pull vertical mark of this more purpley color. And if it's not quite purple enough, you can add a little bit more violet pansy to your mixture. I have one more question. Okay, fire away. Okay, um, so we have someone who bought a linen canvas panel on Amazon, um, uh -huh. but, it was a, but it was an eight by 12. Uh, do you know how to size the panel or canvas down from a 12 by 12? Um, what I do is I use a T-square or a straight edge, and I put that down on top of the canvas, and then I use like a box cutter and run right next to it and cut right through. So that's how I took my uh, 12 by 16 and made it an 8 by 16. Okay, so you just have to cut, you. It with, cut it with a mat knife or a box cutter. All right, so now I'm going to bring this up so that you can see where I've added that little bit of purple there at the bottom. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to tease you like that. Okay, so I'm going to give you a moment to get your painting to this point. and then I'm gonna wipe out my brush as thoroughly as I possibly can so that I get almost all the paint out of the brush. So I don't really want any color in the brush as we move on to our next step. Okay, so let's put out a couple of more colors. Let's put out a little bit of berry wine And we already have pure black out and we've got French blue out. So we're we're pretty good to get ready for our next step. Okay, so I'm gonna I've wiped out my brush, and as you can see here on my towel, there's not really any color coming out of the brush, which is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of berry wine, which is a really pretty burgundy color. And I'm going to darken that berry wine by putting just a little freckle of pure black on my palette and then mix the berry wine and black together so that I've got a color that's super dark burgundy. If you put too much black in it, you're going to have a puddle of black paint here, which is not really what you want. You just want that super, super dark burgundy. And I don't have any uh, floating medium in this mixture. All right, so I'm going to turn my painting so that it's easier for me to control what I'm doing. And I am going to take the chisel edge of the brush, and I'm going to take this dark burgundy color and make a line right along the edge of the vase. OK, so you can see how we've got a nice crisp line going right along the right-hand side of the vase. 
I think I want a little bit more black in my mixture. All right, now I'm going to carry this across the bottom of the vase. And you will notice that the vase is curved at the bottom. So it's a curved line there. And adding a, another dab of black to this. And add that black very, very sparsely as you add it, because it doesn't take much to completely overtake uh, color and turn it all black, which is not what we want. All right. So now I'm going to begin to apply this incredibly dark burgundy color down at the corner of the vase. And then I'm going to scrub a little bit of it kind of into the middle of the vase. And I want you to look, it's not completely covering solidly. It's a very, very, very sparse amount of paint on my brush so that you can still see a little bit of that canvas showing through. I'm scrubbing this on so that I get a nice gradation of color. I don't want this to be solid. And I am going to connect this to that little line that we put up the side of the vase. And I'm just kind of actually scrubbing with the brush to work that paint down into the canvas. And then we've got a vase that looks something like this. I'm not loving what I've got going down here in this um, left-hand corner. So I am gonna pick up a tiny bit of Violet Pansy on my brush. And that's simply changing the color slightly. And I'm gonna put some of that down in the lower left corner of the vase and then just connect that. Make sure I don't have too much paint on the brush and then we'll soften that. So our vase should look something like this right now. If you have a hair dryer or a heat tool uh, handy, uh, we can go ahead and dry our vase at this point, and that would be a good thing. All right. There's not much paint there, so it shouldn't take very much to get it dry, but I do want to bring out a point. The vase is nice and crisp over here on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, it's kind of muddled a little bit. It's not a sharp, crisp edge there. And I want to make it a sharp, crisp edge. So I'm just going to take some of that dark color I put on there and make sure that my vase is nicely squared up there and looks nice and sharp. That's a kind of a nitpicky little thing, but it's important that you take care of details when you're painting. All right, now let's take our berry wine and our black mixture, and we're going to make it a little darker this time. I'm going to have a little bit more black in it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this around so you could see, I'm going to start not quite at the bottom and not quite at the edge, but I'm going to scrub on a very, very dark color. And that's why we wanted our vase to be dry so that we could put this color on. And I'm just scrubbing it on and feathering it in. So you could see we've really made that area right there super dark. Okay, so we're good there. Now, let's look at our the finished vase, we've got blue over here that we haven't put on yet. And we've got some green and red 
and stems that we haven't taken care of yet. We will get to all of that momentarily. All right, I think it might be easier if you have another flat brush that you can use. I'm gonna use a number 12 flat brush here that doesn't have anything in it. And contrary to popular opinion, you don't have to wet your brush before you pick up paint. Um, unless you want your paint thinned down, there's not really any benefit to that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this uh, French blue, and I don't want a lot of it on my brush. A sparse amount will take care of the blue on our vase. And I'm going to use the chisel edge and start right next to the left edge of the vase. And I'm going to scrub that color down, keeping a very nice crisp edge. And just bring that down to where it meets that burgundy purpley color. And I'm going to scrub a little area of blue on here. kind of giving a little bit of a gap between the two blues. All right, there you can see where we've got that, that blue on there. And with the almost non-existent paint on my brush, I am going to just barely skim a little bit more blue on the vase there and right down here. It takes almost no paint. And if you just kind of tap some of that blue on, you will let that blue catch on the weave of the canvas. And I'm gonna bring this up really close so that you can see that little bit of blue there. It's almost not there, but it just hits the very highlight of the canvas weave. Okay, so far so good. Let's turn it into a vase. We've got a lovely background going on. Let's uh, begin to add some thicket to our palette. And you can also add a little medium yellow to your palette now if you want to. What I'm going to do is take that brush that just had the French blue in it, and I'm going to pick up some thicket and add a tiny little bit of medium yellow to that, just to lighten that thicket up just a little tiny bit. And then on our base, kind of down in this area here, I'm gonna add a little green accent. And I can add another little green accent over here. These don't need to be any particular shape. You just don't want them to be gigantic. As you can see, I've added two little accent areas of thicket plus a little medium yellow. And while we have our thicket out on our palette and our brush has got a little green in it, let's wipe out our brush and pick up a little bit of thicket just by itself. And I'm gonna show you how to paint the two leaves that we have at the top of our base. So I'm gonna use almost no paint. I've got the corner of my brush and I'm going to begin to just kind of scrub a little bit of that thicket on there. And that is the shape of one leaf. It's not packed in solid with paint. And then I'm gonna come over here to this more heart-shaped leaf and I'm gonna scrub in the shape of the leaf with my thicket. And again, you don't have to fret and fuss over this. Just get a little green tint on there and you're good to go. All right, so now we're gonna shade these leaves. So very simply, I'm gonna pick up a little black and mix that in with my thicket to make a super dark green. 
and I'm going to just kind of give a little scrub back here at the bottom of this leaf and where it disappears under that heart-shaped leaf. Wipe the excess off and then just scrub a little bit and that leaf back there is all done. Let's shade this big heart-shaped leaf. I'm starting at the back and I want to bring that dark color kind of down the center of the leaf. Lightly kind of tapping to do some blending and that's blended well enough. It's really not much painting going on there. Now I'm going to take the medium yellow and lighten my mixture. And if I tap that on, it's not looking really light enough. And add a little bit more yellow. And if I want to lighten it even further, I can take a little bit of that French blue and brush mix this together until I get kind of a, a nice, soft, lighter green color. And I'm just adding a little bit of that on there. Doesn't take much. And those are our two leaves that we've already painted. How simple was that? All right, so our base is really dry and we've got our leaves drying out pretty well. So let's wipe out our uh, number 12 flat brush. Make sure that we've gotten as much paint out of it as we can. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick little rinse just to get most of that green out because we are going to begin to add the shadowing to our red flowers. And to do that, we're gonna take our floating medium again. And this time we're going to thin out some of our berry wine. So we want this to be extremely thin. So there's more floating medium than berry wine in the brush but there's not much of anything in the brush at all because I'm wiping most of it off. Now, you have, and I'm gonna go over this so that it shows up, you, don't, you do not need to do this, but I wanna show you that our stem that connects our flowers is a graceful S-shape line. So you can see that pretty clearly there, gone over it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this very transparent berry wine color and I'm going to start by kind of going either direction or where my little flowers go. And you can see how they're kind of stair-stepped out or spaced out kind of like rungs on a ladder. You could see I've got, you know, basically one, two, three of them going there. And we're just going to stretch this color out. We're going back and forth over that uh, center line or your stem. And we're just stretching this color out a little bit. And this will create a beautiful shadowed background behind our flowers. And if you are putting so much color on that you are obliterating your background, you've got way, way, way too much paint. It's just a whisper or a veil of color. Better to have too little paint than to have too much. And anytime you are painting these kind of very impressionistic flowers that, you know, I really don't know what kind of flower this is. I would love to be able to give you a name, but it's uh, a red flower. And that's about as botanical as I'm going to be able to get you tonight. But you can see it's just very, very, very small amount of paint going on here and it's very transparent 
and I just keep going over it and making it stronger where I need it to be. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. And I'll give you a minute to play with that. Yeah, so this is not this is not our flower. This is our shadowy background behind our flowers. And I promise you I am going to quit playing in mine. Learning to stop is probably one of the most important things you can learn when you're painting. And what I jokingly say is, that as soon as you think you need to do, quote, one more thing, that's probably the moment you need to stop. All right, let's put, uh, I feel like I'm really rushing you. So I'm gonna give you another whole 30 seconds to get your little shadowy background area on your uh, painting. And then we'll put out a little bit of apple red When you're done with this, go ahead and wipe out your number 12 flat brush. Get it nice and dry. Okay, if you've ever heard the expression, less is more, um, this is the time to kind of remember that. It's not necessarily that less is more, it's like less is the right amount. It's very, very easy to really apply lots and lots of paint and lots and lots of flowers to your graceful stem and little shadow area. When you look at this painting, you can see that there's not that much going on there. We're about to put some darker reds on there, and then we're going to come back and add some lighter reds and oranges on top of it. But we're not painting a bunch of flower petals. We're not trying to create any specific flowers. These are just marks of red paint. I mean, you, you're not seeing uh, flowers. You're not seeing flower centers. You're not seeing flower stems. It's just marks of red paint. All right, so now I'll climb off my soapbox and we will take a little bit of berry wine, a little bit of apple red, and a little bit of pure black, and we will make a super dark red burgundy color. I got mine almost black to start off with, which was not my intention. So I'm adding a little bit more of apple red and a little bit more berry wine to this. No floating medium. All right. So I got a dark red on my brush. And we are going to tap and dab this dark red color on. So by tap and dab, there's a tap. 
and then I'm going to do a little dabbing, kind of imagining this to have like a beautiful, graceful movement to it. Sometimes I might actually get that beautiful, graceful movement I want. And when that happens, that's delightful. But I'm starting here on the stem, kind of tapping and dabbing and creating this little graceful bit of dark red flower. So some of this is just tapping the brush down and some of it's using the corner of the brush. But notice I'm holding my brush as far back on the handle as I can so that I will definitely have less control over the brush. And I'm going to come back and add a little bit more black and berry wine to this. I want to vary the colors that I'm putting on, always starting in the center along that stem line and then tapping and dabbing some of these little areas out to get this kind of graceful um, flower form. Okay, can you see I've got a couple of different tones of red going on there? It's not all one solid color. I do want to make sure that I've got this graceful S curve of a stem going on. Because that's really what this painting is all about, is this like swath of red. And you just have to take your time. And as you start to apply color, just kind of see where your form is going to take you. Okay, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. It's got a nice kind of graceful uh, curve to it. Uh, these little branches are not stacked up on one another. There's some space between them for it to breathe. Things are hanging in different directions, different kind of curves to them. So that's what I really want. And once you get that done, then you can take your uh, paint dryer and give it a quick blast to dry your paint. Okay, once you've done that, let's wipe our brush out to get rid of that dark red. I'll give you a minute to continue to play with that longer than you need to. Let's put a little pure orange out on our palette. 
So I've got apple red and pure orange, and I've got my flexible blade metal palette knife. And we're going to apply some marks with our palette knife. Now, some of you I know love it. Some of you I know don't love it as much, but it's good to play with it. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of pure orange to some apple red. It's mostly apple red. And unusual for me, I'm picking up a fair amount of uh, this color on my palette knife, and I'm going to just kind of lay it down and just kind of tap it and see what kind of marks I get. So I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. And so I'm going to continue to do this, picking up a little bit more paint as I need it. And we're going to let some of it trail out on these little uh, edges as it comes out there. And I will tell you, occasionally you're gonna get a mark that you love and you're gonna be super excited about it. And sometimes you're gonna get a mark that is not exactly what you wanted, but we do have a rule that uh, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. So as you can see, I'm just kind of tapping some of this red on and just making little marks. I cannot attempt to try to make uh, flowers. I just am making little red marks here on my painting. And if they look perfect, then I'm very amazed. And if they don't look so good, then I wish I had done something else, but I persevere. I move on. You have to have the courage of your convictions and just add these lovely red marks to your painting and know that everyone who looks at your painting will be amazed at how you created these beautiful red flowers. And I would tell you, this is not the end of this painting. We've got a little bit more to do. And as you move up to the top, you're going to make smaller marks. And just turn your painting around so that it's comfortable for you to hold it. All right, so that's what I've got on here right now. It doesn't look like my other painting, and that's perfectly fine. We're Like I said, we're not done with this. This is like step, I don't know what number of however many. And what shade of orange is that on your palette paper? I have pure orange out right now. We will be adding an orange that's called pumpkin in just a little while. Okay, and if they don't like orange or any of the colors in the orange family, <laughs> what would you recommend? I'm not sure. I mean, if they want to highlight their red flowers and not have an orange, they can use uh, colors in the pink family. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give this a quick dry. And while I'm doing that, you're going to have a moment to catch up.
Okay, that's pretty dry. I'm not going to say it's completely dry, but uh, we got a good start on getting it dry. So I know some of you were hating the palette knife and wishing it had never been invented or wish nobody had ever painted with it. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my number 12 flat brush and I've wiped all the paint out of it. And I'm going to take some apple red and that pure orange, just like we mixed with our palette knife. And I'm adding it on a brush. And I'm going to do a few marks with this so that you can be a little bit happier with what you're painting. Because I know some of you are just not loving that palette knife. All right, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to basically with the paint that's on my brush, let me see if I can hold that up. You can see that I've got, you know, a nice amount of paint on the brush. It's not globbed on there, but it's more than we've been using. And what I'm going to do, let's see if I can do this while I'm holding it up. And it's probably not going to work, but I'm holding my paintbrush at the end of the handle. Here's the handle right there. And I'm going to lay the brush basically flat down and kind of tap and then go out on the chisel edge. So you see that orangey mark there? So let's dab a few of these marks on with our brush instead of our palette knife. Now, this is not your green light to overpaint this and cover everything up. We still want to see some of that dark burgundy, those marks that we made. But we are literally just tapping some of this orangey color on, this red orangey color. Okay, so you could see some of that going on there about halfway up. And I'm just going to continue with my pure orange and apple red. And again, just kind of slapping this brush down and letting the brush do all the work. I am really not doing much work here at all. Just laying the brush down and then just kind of tipping it over a little bit. Okay, there we go. So let's give you a moment to do that. And then we're going to pinch and wipe that number 12 flat brush. I've given you just a minute to catch up with that. Okay, let's take our apple red on our number 12 flat brush and add just a tiny bit of orange to that. It's mostly apple red. And we're going to add three red accents to our vase. One's going to be kind of at the center at the bottom, then over on the right side, but set in from the edge, and then another little random spot right about there. All right, so I've got my paint on my brush and I'm going to just set the brush down on the flat side of the brush and just kind of let that accent come off the brush just like that. Again, it's not too big, not too small, and a random size uh, or a random shape. And let's do some at the bottom of the vase the same kind of way.
And then we'll give ourselves another little red mark right about there. Just gonna make sure that the bottom of my base is perfectly curved and doesn't have any kind of weird bumps and bulges on it. Okay, there, straighten that out. Whew, done a lot of work tonight, folks. I can't wait to see what you all have done tonight. That's always a, a fun thing when you all take pictures and share it. All right, let's take our uh, number 12 flat brush. We've wiped it out really well, and you can set it down and get out a little bit of pumpkin on your palette. And you could do this either with your number 12 flat brush, just like we did the last uh, layer of uh, paint there, or you can do it with your palette knife. So I'm gonna take a little, I'm gonna probably do a little bit of both on mine. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this pumpkin color and we're gonna just add some of this orange and you can see it makes that incredibly bright highlight. <laughs> this is where we're really lighting this little painting up. So you can see, just letting this paint kind of tap on and trail off. And you will learn pretty quickly about how much paint you really need on your palette knife in order to get these little highlights to happen. And I'm thinking that probably it's gonna happen that somebody's gonna get more paint than they wanted on there. And if that happens, just kind of go with it. Um, you'll do, this painting is taking you, what, about an hour out of your life. You can do another painting uh, tomorrow and you will be much better equipped to deal with these little palette knife highlights and you'll do a better job. One thing I want to take a minute to kind of share with you is the idea of coming back to this painting and trying to keep finessing it, there, there comes a point where your painting has done the job it's supposed to do. It's supposed to get you painting, give you some fun and inspirational moments, and teach you some new techniques, give you an opportunity to try something out. That's the job of the painting. Once you've done that, let the painting go. Let it rest. Don't come back to it. Paint another one. You'll do a much better job painting another painting than you will coming back and trying to play with this painting to turn this into something that it's really not supposed to be. You get you basically get one good shot at uh, doing a painting, and then you have to leave it alone. I, when people say they're going to come back and try to fix something, I'm like, well, fixing a painting is not the same thing as creating a painting. It doesn't, it's got different um, techniques that need to be done, different rules to follow. And it's probably better to just paint another painting. Learn from your painting, let it do its job, and then let it go. All right, so I've added some more uh, of the pumpkin with my number 12 flat brush. And then we just have a couple of other little things to do, and we're going to be finished with our red flowers in a vase. All right, so let's wipe out that number 12 flat brush. And I want to pick up some violet pansy. And you can add a little bit of berry wine and a touch of black to this. We're making a really dark purpley burgundy color.
and I'm going to make sure that I've pressed my brush down so that I've got a nice chisel edge on my brush. And I'm going to paint a stem. So to do this, I've got to turn my brush handle up toward the ceiling. And so you're not going to really be able to see this well. So I'm going to try to show you um, on the side. But I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to simply tap it. And you can see there that I've created a very dark stem. And I'm going to put in a few more of these dark stems. And if they're not showing up, add a little bit more black. They'll be very, very dark. I'm going to put another little stem over here. I put in another one here, starting right up at that leaf. And then I'm just tapping. And you can make your little stems bend if you want to, or just angle off. Okay. Oh, Got sorry. Questions? No, that's okay. Um, Kathy doesn't have a canvas, so she's using a white multimedia paper. Is there some shade of color that she can use to put on the left side of the vase? Um, she's not going to do. She's not going to be able to get anything that's going to give her this kind of nice natural tone over there. So she might want to just carry this blue color that we put on the right side. She might just want to carry some of that over on the left side, or either take some uh, violet pansy and maybe French blue and do something that's maybe a little bit more purpley over there. Okay. But I want to encourage everyone who's taken tonight's class, if you've never painted on a clear primed linen canvas, do yourself a favor and get one. It is one of the most beautiful surfaces you can paint on. All right, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of black on my number 12 flat brush, and I'm going to tap a little dark black line right underneath my vase. And I just did that with the chisel edge of the brush, and it just gives that nice little um, crisp line right underneath the vase. But we're not quite done. We still got a couple of other things to do. And I know we're right at 8.30, but bear with me just a little bit longer. We've got one, two more things to do. And I think you all will have created a beautiful painting, as, as I jokingly say, in just about an hour. All right, so I've rinsed out my number 12 flat brush, and I'm going to make a light green color. So I'm going to take medium yellow, a little thicket, I could add a little French blue to this. And we haven't put out any white paint on our palette, but it's time. So let's put out a little bit of white. And I'm just going to add a smidgen of white to this to lighten it up. So it should be a pretty light green. And I'm going to paint another stem with this light green color. And I'm doing it the same way, tapping with the chisel edge of the brush. I'm just going to go over this again to make it a little bit brighter. OK, so now I've got a light green stem going in our base. And we have one last thing to do. So I'm just going to grab a uh, number eight flat brush, just because it's clean and dry. That's um, no special gimmicks going on here. The brush is clean and dry. And I want to pick up some titanium white, very, very sparse amount of that. And I'm going to put two or three highlights on my base. The first highlight is going to go down in the lower left corner. 
and I'm going to set the corner of my brush down on the vase and just kind of flick up. And then I'm going to take that brush and tap right above that black line that I just made. And I'm sorry, this is off camera. I will get it up there for you to see it in just a second. All right, there you go. So those little lines there, the bottom. And then let's put two highlights on our vase. So very sparse amount of paint going right between the stem and the left side of the vase. And then gonna drop down a little bit and make another little white highlight between those two dark stems. So it's kind of a dry brush highlight right now, but I am going to take a little bit more paint and simply add a brighter highlight in the center of those. And that, my friends, is our red flowers in a glass vase. So I hope that you have enjoyed this and I wanna let you know what's coming up next from Plaid and the Michaels Community Classroom. Uh, let's show it to you this way. Chris Williams is gonna be teaching this on the 23rd. So it is a summer um, bicycle canvas and she'll be teaching that on the 23rd. So this will be on michaels.com and you can go ahead and sign up for that. And I want to let you know if you want to share your pictures in the Plaid uh, Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook group, you can do that using the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge. So I want to thank you all for joining me tonight and look forward to seeing you in another class in Michael's Community Classroom. Have a great night, everybody.